Hi, welcome back to the Lee Writing Services YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about television scripts and how they're different than movie scripts and how they could be similar to movie scripts as well. Um, basically, television scripts are similar to movie scripts. Uh, you don't have to really think about television scripts too differently. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they like to make it seem that television scripts have to be formatted much differently because it's on television. No, that's not the case. Um, the, the formatting is, is pretty much the same. You have slug lines, action lines, dialogue. Uh, actually, you'll probably have more dialogue in, in a television script because there's less action. And the reason there's less action is because the production value of most television shows are far less than what you'd find in a movie, especially if it's like a sitcom. You know, if you look at a sitcom script, it's going to be mostly dialogue because it's it's a basically a stage performance. That's all there is, people talking to each other. Yeah, you know, they might move around in the room that they're in, but... Overall, you're going to see a script that's mostly dialogue centered in the middle, and it'll go on for like 20 or 30 pages that way. Um, but if you're writing, you know, another kind of TV show script, you know, maybe like some Law and Order type thing, then it, it'll look more like a movie script because there's more action, there's more scenes, and so on. Um, basically, what I want to talk about is the the main difference um, or, or one one particular type of formatting that you have to watch out for in television scripts it's very simple it's basically um, signifying the different acts like act one act two act three and, and these acts are what separate or, or what tell tell the director that this is when a commercial is going to take place and, and that's all there is to it you know if it's a show that's on a like a basic channel that has commercials then the script usually after the first act is over a commercial will be played and then the second act will show up and then once the second act is over then another commercial and that's usually how they do it um, you know on reruns they might change that a little bit but for when it's first shown on television they usually do it that way you know one act is over they do a commercial second act they do another and so on um, so all I want to show you here is, you know, how you put in the Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 in, in this script. Um, I'm using Final Draft 10. Uh, don't worry if you don't have Final Draft 10, you can simply use Microsoft Word or any other um, word processing software. It's fine. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, this is the first page. So what I want to do is put in Act 1. Now... I've seen Act 1 put in a lot of different ways. Some people, or some writers will just put Act 1, I already have it saved that way, Act 1 there, and then go underneath and do a fade in, or actually this should be, and then just put school or something. Actually this should be, yeah, that would be better. Um, however, I like to do it this way, and then you center it, let me go to... Uh, uh, alignment centered yeah I mean that that's the way I normally see it done and that's the way I like to do it too and then space this up so you have act one well I'll space this down doesn't really matter all right act one and then you fade in like normal in movie scripts you would fade in and then you have the uh, slug line school um, well let's do interior school um, this is just random off the top of my head, the, the story, so I don't think this story is anything special. Uh, and then, um, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, normally you would have a cast list before the first page. Um, yeah, up here they let you do that. You, you would basically create a list of all the characters that are in the show. And, and then on the first, or then in the script, you don't have to capitalize the characters' names when you introduce them because the cast list will already tell the writer or tell the reader who these people are. You don't have to introduce them into the script that way. It's already in the cast list. You know, like in a movie script, you would have uh, uh, Jonathan uh, Banks, 70, or probably wouldn't be 65 in school, 15 uh, carries his bag down the hallway. 
Okay, Th this is how it would look in a, in a movie script, but you don't have to do that. You could just put Jonathan carries his bag, or book bag, I should say, down the hallway. Okay, that that's how that would look. Because the thing is, if, if you're writing a, a TV show, and it's an ongoing series, and you're, there's multiple episodes, you don't have to keep reintroducing those characters in every episode, because the audience or, or the readers know who those characters are, so why are you reintroducing them again and again and again? That's why you just have a cast list. That way, anyone looking at the script can just look at that cast list and know who everyone is. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to get into the cast list here. You know, it's it's pretty simple. I'm sure you can figure out what a cast list is. Okay, but getting back to Act 1, Act 2. Um, okay, so Jonathan carries his book bag down the hallway. He runs into... He runs into his friend, Kyle. Uh, and then just some random dialogue. I'm not going to get too much of this. Hey, Kyle. How was science class? And then... I hated it. <laughs> okay, blah, blah, blah. And then they walk away together. Uh, okay, now, obviously, a real script would, or a real act would be about eight or nine pages. You know, let's say it's a 30 minute show. Um, actually, if it's a 30 minute show with commercials, it would be about 20 minutes of, of actual show time, uh, which means it would be a 20 minute or 20 page script. Uh, and that means every act would be seven or eight pages. So act one would be seven or eight pages, and then you would end it and then go to act two. But let's just say for time constraints that I'm done with act one. Uh, how would I end it? Well, you could go end of act one. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, I forgot one thing. You have to fade, you have to fade it to black, just like you would with a movie once that's finished. So, hold on. Go to transition, fade, uh, fade to black. Just remember how in a movie script you'd go fade to black and then put the end, and then that would be it in a movie script. However, since this is just the end of the first act, you don't want to end the entire thing. So what you do is you go fade to black and then end of act one. Uh, you can put you can put it in the middle, like like up there, like you can do this. Uh, and then underline it, you know, right click, style, uh, underline, you know, you can do that. Uh, maybe, uh, hold on, I want to space it up. right there. And then, and then that would be it. End of act one, fade to black, end of act one, and then that would be it. it I mean, you don't get caught up too much in where you put the end of act one. You can put it on the left, you can put it in the middle. Either way is fine. It's, you don't have to get too worried about that. Um. Okay, so after you end Act 1, you don't just put Act 2 right here if it's on the same page, you know, and then fade in again. You don't want to do that. You have to make Act 2 on a new page. So if there's still space left over after this, uh, what you want to do is create a page break. Uh, that way you'll go to a, a second page and you'll be able to put act two and so on. So uh, what what we want to do is go to, I believe it's uh, tools, wait, wait, insert, insert, yeah. Insert page break right there. Uh, you just click that and boom, you're on the second page. Um, again, in other versions of Final Draft, uh, in, uh, page break might be in a different place. Uh, I forget where it is in uh, Final Draft 9, so you'll have to do some research there, but just look for the, pra the page break option. Uh, you click that and you go right to the second page, and once you're on there, uh, you just start the uh, next act. So you do Act 2. Oh, it's already underlined. That's nice. And then you do your fade in thing. And then you do, oh, I don't know, interior home day. Uh, so you'd want act two, or at least I would want act two to be centered again. So style, right click style. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> that's not it. Act two, you go to 
format alignment center. Okay. And then you type your next uh, next act. Uh, Jonathan does his homework on the couch. Uh, his, um, well, we'll already know who his father is, so let's say his father's name is Chris. Uh, Chris walks in, uh, shock, or becomes shocked at his son doing homework. Uh, I don't know what I'm, this story is. Oh my god, you're actually doing your homework for a change. Yeah, I have to try, try uh, it out for one song. <laughs> to totally off the top of my head, I don't know what this story is. Uh, but you get the idea. Now let's say um, Chris leaves and then we want to end the act. But again, this is a totally weird story, so don't pay any attention. Um, so what we want to do is, again, end of act, or sorry, fade to black, we want to transition, so, uh, well, let me do it with the control, so we got to go to home, script elements, transition, fade to black, and then end of act two, um, again, you want to center it, you don't want to center it, I want to center it, so format, alignment, center, Style, underline, there we go, end of act two, and then another commercial would take place. And if we want to go to act three, we get hit enter, and then we do another page break, insert page break, and then we start it again, act three, and so on and so forth. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then when you get to the final act, I mean, like when you're done with act three and it's all over, you obviously you you end it, you end the the act, and then you end the script too. So you can put end of act three, and then under that, uh, put the end or end of end of episode, end of script. It, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but if you want to put those extra endings there just to signify the episode is over, uh, you can do that. But just end of act three for the most part should be fine, and then if there's nothing else after that. Then they'll know it's over. So anyway, um, I hope I, you know, went over the very basic uh, structure of a tele television script. Again, it's very similar to a movie script. You just have to put in the acts, uh, which represent the uh, the commercial breaks. Um, you know, in between the acts are the commercial breaks, um, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, I mean, there's some differences, I, I guess, in, in camera formatting, you know, the camera commands that you would put in the script. Overall, you don't have to worry too much about that, and especially since most directors wouldn't want you to put that stuff in. That's The camera stuff is for, for, their, um, for their saying. They, they don't usually like when script, script writers uh, include those directions in the script unless they're absolutely necessary. So, and that, that makes it very similar to movie scripts, too. Um, so, all you have to worry about is slug line, action, dialogue, minor transitions, and that's it. Okay, so, hope uh, that was informative. Um, share, like, subscribe, do whatever else you're supposed to do on this stuff. Uh, and I'll see you on the next one. All right.